how prednisone works. First, I'll explain in simple terms how prednisone works, and then I'll describe in scientific terms how prednisone works to help you overcome immune system and inflammation problems. So I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist, and the most common reasons people take prednisone are for autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, polymyalgia rheumatica, and other autoimmune conditions, and then inflammatory conditions. Rheumatoid arthritis, again, can be inflammatory. And so we're going for the immune system and the inflammation. Both of those are the main reasons people take prednisone. And so if we can understand how prednisone works, then we can understand why we need to take it to help with conditions like organ transplants, in my situation, immune thrombocytopenia, and hundreds of other conditions. So first of all, it is affecting the immune system. Because we have these autoimmune conditions, we are turning off the body's crazy response that it's having. It's attacking its own self in some way. In my situation, it was attacking my own body's platelets, killing them. And so I could be at risk to bleed to death at any time. So prednisone works by affecting all cells of the immune system. I'm going to explain to you what those are in the more complicated section. And then prednisone is affecting the inflammation cascades and pathways. So there are proteins and cytokines and all these signals that send out when you have inflammation and it, and it, like one sends a signal to make another, sends a signal to make another and another. And prednisone is stopping that signaling cascade so that the inflammation goes down. The redness, the swelling, the pain, those things go down. If you're having a rash, the redness and swelling go away. If you're having um, eye swelling and you're suddenly going blind, the redness and the swelling go down because it's just stopping a cascade. Prednisone is not treating the source of the problem. I wanna make sure you understand that. The way prednisone works is by halting the systems in your body, not by fixing where the problem is starting. It's just stopping those signals from being sent. It's like a telephone line and just cutting the telephone line. It's just stopping that signal. There's still somebody who's calling and saying, hi, I need help, 911, send me an ambulance. Just that message isn't being transmitted, okay? So prednisone is not going to solve the source of the problem, but it will solve the symptoms of the problem. In my case, it stopped me from bleeding to death. In other people's, it stops the pain. So that was the simpler, more understandable description of how prednisone works. And now I want to dive into the science. I have this article all about long-term glucocorticoid treatment. They, they described it better than anybody I've ever read about how prednisone works. So I wanted to talk about this. Back to how prednisone and other glucocorticoids Actually, let's just talk about prednisone is a glucocorticoid. It means it affects glucose and glucose metabolism. Corticoid means it's made in the adrenal cortex. That's right above your kidneys. And another type of way to describe prednisone is it's a corticosteroid. And so all of these ways of describing it are essentially saying it affects your adrenal system, and it is a steroid, which means it's affecting your metabolism, okay? So let's talk about the immune system first. Prednisone affects every single immune cell in your body. So most of them, it makes them go down, but there's a few of them that it makes it go up. If you're having blood tests while you take prednisone, you'll notice that a lot of them look like they're going down, but one type goes up, all right? Prednisone decreases the T cells. They're called T lymphocytes. They go down, monocytes go down, macrophages, and eosinophils. And finally, basophils. All of those are going down. Your body is turning off your immune system by turning down the amount of these cells that are circulating in your system. Then it's turning up the amount of neutrophils. So these you might see on your blood test as WBC or white blood cell. They are more than normal, and that's because prednisone is causing the release of these immature, like these little baby neutrophils from, for example, the lining of your blood vessels, and they are being released, and 
they're not as good at the job of being a white blood cell, but it makes it look like there are more of them when you get your blood tested. And so the WBC is normally a sign of infection, but it might just be because you have more neutrophils than usual. Then there are these signals called cytokines, and there are several involved in the immune system, such as interleukin-2, IL-2 is what you'll see it written as, and IL-6, interleukin-6. And your body makes less of those. So your body lowers the synthesis of IL-2 and IL-6. Next, how your body is doing this is two ways. One is called genomic and one is called non-genomic. Genomic meaning your genome or your DNA. Prednisone is affecting your DNA. Up to one third of the DNA can be affected by prednisone. Can you believe that? Whew. Prednisone binds to cytosolic receptors and creates a glucocorticoid receptor complex. And that goes to the DNA and turns on or trans activation of DNA responsible for anti-inflammatory proteins. So this is how it's an anti-inflammatory. This is how it's turning off inflammation in inflammatory conditions. These proteins include interleukin-10 or IL-10, annexin-1, and proteins that inhibit NF-kappa-B or nuclear factor kappa-B. That transactivation is probably what's responsible for many of the side effects of prednisone. Then there's the transrepression or the blocking of certain DNA to turn down the inflammation. This hormone receptor complex is inhibiting or blocking pro-inflammatory transcription factors. For example, inactivating that NF-kappa-B. So prednisone is affecting up to one third of the genes, and that's how it's affecting the inflammatory system by blocking those signaling molecules. Then that second way it's working is non-genomic. That's by stopping at the cellular membrane. There are glucocorticoid receptors, these little keyholes, if you will, for the prednisone or other glucocorticoids to attach to. And those ones on the outside work fast within seconds to minutes, whereas the ones that had to go inside, those are more longer term signals. So these ones on the outside help us instantly respond to threats. And it might turn on other signals in our body, like for example, your ability to run and hide. So that might be the epinephrine and the norepinephrine systems so that we can turn on our fight or flight hormones and get away. Now, those might be the things including having high blood sugar and high blood pressure. So you have the energy to run away. Those happen really fast. And so these ones normally happen in really emergency situations when we have really high doses of prednisone between 300 to 100 or more. And so those are the ones that we need just for emergency situations. For example, when somebody has multiple sclerosis and might be going blind in their eye or has giant cell arteritis, again, might be going blind in their eye. They get super high doses to save that vision. So to summarize, how prednisone works is you take a pill, it turns off inflammation and the immune system, and it can save your life or at least make you feel better. But it comes with a ton of side effects, right? And I've made tons of videos all about all of the side effects that prednisone can make. And if you're wondering, is it worth it to have prednisone doing all of those things to my immune system and my ability to combat inflammation? And if so, you should download my prednisone checklist. My prednisone checklist includes the top mistakes people make so that you don't have to make them and helps you know exactly what to do to counteract those top seven mistakes people make while taking prednisone. Download the prednisone checklist now to find out exactly what to do while taking prednisone. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.